Hey guys, thanks for checking out the podcast. If you like this podcast, make sure you subscribe and give us a positive rating. If you'd like to see more about what we do, head over to patreon.com slash slightly EMP. Greetings all. Welcome back to Doom to Repeat, a history podcast. The show where three friends come together each week and talk about interesting moments throughout history. I am your host, Andrew Arana, and today I'm joined by the Scholar Ballers, Matthew and Levi. On this week's show, we'll be talking about the United States War in Afghanistan. But before we get into that, tradition dictates that I ask the Scholar Ballers how they have been. Boys, it's been a hot minute. Yeah. But how have you been? Levi, let's start with you. How have you been, man? Well, I'm mean, I'm, I'm good. You know, things, things are going all right so far, you know. We have had good. fan outcry. Fan outcry. Screaming for the Scholar Ballers. Screaming for the Scholar I cannot tell you how many people, and I'm being uh, completely serious right now, um, in person and then also online that say, hey, I like this history podcast that you guys do. I mm-hmm. like the host, the co-host on it. You guys should do that again. I'm like, yeah, I know. We're going to get to it eventually and here we are we're doing it now yeah uh, no here we are you know you gotta understand you know like um i think our f- schedules are you know i d- d- despite on how many people um perceive it as you know we are busy people um we have a lot of things going on um i'm very much so like an academic you know i'm i'm also in like a fraternity so that takes up a lot of my time and i'm also planning on joining some new clubs and uh some new organizations absolutely I graduate here and i'm also studying for the L- L- lsat again so <laughs> um, know, i'm i'm a busy i'm a busy bee right now so i do want to quickly give you some interesting tidbits uh we have had 10 episodes of doom to repeat now a couple of those were the election special so those kind of count, but not really count. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, of course, three were the Napoleonic Wars. But in case you guys are interested, right now, the majority of our audience is, unsurprisingly, from the United States. Mm-hmm. Uh, number two is from India. And then we have had downloads in Canada, Mexico, Brazil, Argentina, Australia, Mal- Aust- Australia, Malaysia, um, Thailand, Russia, France, Germany, the United Kingdom, Ireland, Portugal, Turkey. We had one in Turkey. That might have been Matthew when he was in the airport. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we had one in Estonia. Interesting. Estonia, Estonia. He's my favorite. Whoever, he or she, they are my favorite in Estonia. <laughs> they decided to listen to me rant about China one time. Um, so let's go. We've had Denmark. The, the Netherlands. Netherlands. To all my, Deu- to all my Deutsch, bro. <laughs> Cro- Croatia. New Zealand. New Zealand. And I think that's it right now. All but pretty right, good. Awesome. We can yeah. officially say we are worldwide. And World- Mr. Worldwide. <laughs> our most popular episode, episode one, Mesopotamia, which isn't surprising. Usually it is episode one. People find a new podcast and they start off on one. 125 downloads. Nice. Pretty you good. Pretty good. Um. And then, all together, we are encroaching, encroaching on a thousand. So, Damn. Pretty good for not uploading too much at all. Uh, Damn, okay. But this is, a, I would say, mildly popular history podcast. And I believe if we keep it up, because it's interesting. I'm going to go off on a little tidbit here for just a second. Um, but looking at the gaming block, and that's a weekly show where we do more or less upload every week. I think within the last year, we've missed eight weeks where schedules didn't work out. It was holidays. Something was going on. But you can start seeing where the consistency adds up and people really start catching on to it. Mm-hmm. And I think with the history one, this will catch on even faster, especially with topical conversations like this, where we talk about the history of the Afghanistan war. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just want to throw it. I thought it was interesting, and I love looking at all the countries and being like, "Where are people listening to us? Who was that one Croatian that was like, hey, I don't listen to this. I don't know.' But the Matthew, real one. that's who they were. 
Matthew, mm-hmm. how have you been? You know, great. Starting um, revolts at my job. Of having course, a great time. Um, kind of just chilling in a better place mentally, physically, emotionally. Maybe not financially, but, you know, <laughs> chilling. Are any of us financially? I feel um, like America as a whole right now is like, we're all broke. <laughs> Unless you're rich, like, much, we're all yeah, broke. Pretty much. I mean... I feel like we we're, we're, it's still a vibe though you know we're we're not we're not completely penniless. <laughs> no, we're not. It's it's funny. Um, I'm taking a Great Depression class of all things this semester, and the similarities between then and now are striking. It's kind of scary. The only difference is like it's not the 1930s, you know. So like it's not that bad, and also. Uh, corporations do still have money so they can keep doors open so jobs are still there but we keep talking about like this wealth gap and stuff and it's like oh yeah if you look at it it is pretty big but that's that's a whole nother can of worms which we're going to get into um i do want to tell you guys or I, i'm not tell you guys i have a question for you guys we're going to do this segment called question of the week and this question is replacing the would you rather that we used to do where I'd ask you, would you rather do this or that, you know, whatever. Um, I think the question of the week works a lot better because it expands our options and it can be about anything. I'll try to keep it topical if I deem it so like this week's, or it might just be something completely random. You never really know, but your question for this week goes as follows. And this is kind of a heavy one. If you feel uncomfortable answering, you don't have to. How long do you think it will be before the United States is at war again? The United States just exited its longest war of all time, beat out Vietnam by five months, and we are officially in peacetime. How long do you think this peace will last? And I'm talking war, not conflict, because I know the United States has conflicts all the time. We are technically fighting people right now, but I'm talking like, you know, a war. Uh, Levi, do you want to start? Um, actually, I'd like uh, Matthew to go first. All right, Matthew. Um, and it's been passed so, to you. Yeah. I've talked about this a bit recently because I don't think it's the United States that's going to be at war soon. Because, again, as you were saying with your Great Depression classes, the only difference that you can really see right now is that it's not the 1930s mostly. But there's a lot of tension in the world in general. And I think it's just going to be another world war, which is a bit scary to think of because everybody thinks that it's just going to go nuclear, but that's not what it is. The problem is that now we have so many people that you can kind of fight this endless devastating war, like what world war one was, what world war two was, but you can fight those for even longer now. So I'd say probably within the next decade, we will definitely be seeing a globalized conflict to where there will be definitive sides where I think China will be one, Russia will be one, and the United States and maybe Europe. Europe's really pissed at us right now, though. Like, I've watched a lot of the newsreels of the European governments, and they are just literally livid with the United States right now and what the fuck they just did. Um, well, but I'm... the United States personally, we, we love war. It's what we do. It's kind of our thing. Well, so, we've loved war since 1945. We've loved war since 1776. <laughs> so I mean, There's a point where the United States didn't want to be in war. Uh, um... Yeah, that was after Vietnam. But well, no, I'm talking about isolationism. You know, pre, yeah. you know, the beginning eras of World War One, and even the beginning of World War Two, where they were like, "No, we don't want to." But then after that, it's definitely been the United States has just been gung ho, like ah, everything, sure. <laughs> but you had, I mean, before that, you had the War of 1812. You had the Spanish American War. You had the Civil War. Then Dude, you, you had, had like a million Native American wars. wars. Oh like yeah, a million just... Amer- Native American wars. 
<laughs> but do you they count that as a war? Is that uh, a war? They beat Custard. He had a hundred <laughs> men. He's an idiot. <laughs> they still beat him. <laughs> yeah, okay. One battle is not a war. We've been over this before. <laughs> You know, <laughs> one battle is not a war. It's yeah, a sure conflict. it is. You ever heard of that like forty minute war or something? That's my favorite war of all time. Where these oh. idiots declare war and there's like such a huge army. They're like, oh, shit, we lost. I mean, I, guess <laughs> Why it, we I, guess, I mean, I guess it just depends on how you like you define it though. Like, if it's two different nations, then yeah, yeah. might as well call it a war. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say um, a good with before another election for the presidency because I'm not saying that like there's no way um, Papa Joe is going to make it to the next election time <laughs> either physically <laughs> mentally Papa Joe Papa Joe, <laughs> Papa Joe. Uh, there's just no way there it's um. it's but somebody will be in his position if it's not him if he does make it the rest of his term Wow, I'm wrong. And you know what? Take that to Vegas and roll with it because you're lucky. But I just do not see him making it through the rest of his term. I do not. But before his term, these four years that he was elected to lead, there will be another war. And it will most likely be in the Middle East again. Yeah, I, I agree with you there that it will most likely be. In the Middle East, um, but it will it will probably be Pakistan. Yeah, it, we uh, yeah. Um, well, Levi, Matthew is predicting World War Three within the next ten years. Do you have anything a little more optimistic? A little more optimistic, <laughs> uh, maybe. Let's 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 kind of look short term compared to a uh, long term. So let's say Matthew's long term, um, and I, I'll be short term. I'll be okay. I'll be I'll be the next probably two two to four years. Okay. Um, so yes, the United States is pulling out of Afghanistan or has pulled out. Yep. We're done. Pulled, we're the done. war is officially we're over. Done. We're done. The war is officially over. So does the question is, is well, when's the next time we're going to go to war again? And to be honest, that's really something that can't be an- answered right now. Yeah. Because there's now that there's the question of, well, does the United States have a moral obligation to return to Afghanistan or to do something? And we can argue that for days, you know. Definitely, what? and we'll we'll discuss that at the end of the show too. Yeah. But you know, you know, and um, do we have that moral obligation? Um, and what are we doing now? You know, in, in reality, um, we've wasted twenty years, spent two trillion dollars, tw- over twenty five hundred. United States soldiers killed or wounded. Um, nobody even knows how many Afghanis have died. Hundreds of thousands. Hundreds. Def- um, easily. Definitely. And it just goes on and on and on. And with this 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 unwinnable um, conflict, this unwinnable war. So now we, uh, but if we look at it um, technically, we have this occupying force pulling out of this godforsaken hellhole that had no chance of victory whatsoever. And now we are returning home. The occupiers are now returning home and are have the great opportunity. Now, this is my optimist side. have the great opportunity to start preparing and dealing with things that are, quite frankly, more important. And these, and these entail the growing threat of China. So, um, for many people who may not want to believe or just don't see it, China is a growing threat. They have been for the last 30 10, years, almost 30 years. It really got accelerated when President um, Z um, came to power. And um, a lot of people would look at um, the terrible mess that um, pulling out of Afghanistan is called. And they can call it an embarrassment all you want. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But there are there are there are, there are more things, more important things to prioritize now. Yeah. Um, and so, my prediction is is that when will America go to war again? I don't know. I I don't know. 
let's just say America is in prep phase for something new. No, uh, well, okay, uh, yeah, absolutely, because the United States is always in prep phase. Even when we're at war, we're at prep phase. You know, mm-hmm. um, it's like I said before, we are in so many different conflicts right now across the world. Um, even when we did have the longest war in our history, which you know, it's five months longer. You could argue the last. 16 months weren't really a conflict because we did have the peace treaty and there weren't any to my knowledge any like encounters uh at all Mm -hmm. there might have been a couple here and there but you know for the most part it was winding down Mm -hmm. um but yeah i I, the thing with china and i'm just going to make this quick so we can move on to our actual big topic because you you know everything connected to china um (laughs) best case scenario is at least in my mind, what I would think is that World War II is still fresh in a lot of people's minds. It is not that old at all. We know how old it is. It's what around 80 years old now um, till the end from the end of World War II. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, we've see, we still see the ramifications of that today. You go over to Europe, everything is 50 years old. They're like, why is this so new? It's like, ah, you know, the Nazis, they blew everything up. We had to rebuild everything. So I feel like those wounds are still there. And then we're also so entwined in this world economy that a total all-out war is a little less likely than it was in the 40s. Not saying it's not impossible. It's always Mm -hmm. possible. But my hope would be that – I mean best case scenario at this point, which I think we're already in, is that we have a cold war with China, which Mm -hmm. we definitely do right now. We're definitely Mm -hmm. in some sort of cold war with China. The main thing is Taiwan, and one day China is going to finally do it. They are going to be like, we're done, we're taking Taiwan. And heaven forbid, heaven bless. Now, I'm not saying this is the right choice either, but I feel like for the good of the world, heaven bless, the United States just pulls back. (laughs) And they're like, fine, take it. It's not worth World War III Mm -hmm. over this island. Um, At least that's how I see it. Now, I don't know. None of us know. You know, um, and and to kind of add on that, like you know how how willing, like, as you said, with this, since everybody's so interconnected now, that's the power of globalization. Yeah. Everybody's so interconnected <laughs> now you know, with trade, commerce, economics. Are 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 our world leaders really ready to plunge practically the entire world into a um, global depression? Yeah, because you know if if China did go to war with the United States, let's say. There's so many ramifications for that at home. We know that they do have a semi-dictatorship and stuff, but there are people that don't like war there, you know? We talk about the Chinese government all the time being nefarious. There's a lot of people there, over a billion people, and I can confidently assure you that most of them, you know, over 50%, Mm -hmm. do not want to go to war with the United States, you know? like Maybe they hate the U.S., but they don't want to go to war because no one does. Bro, we saw how much a uh, how much one cargo ship blocking the Suez Canal can do to the global economy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I don't want to know what a war will do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, and then on the topic of when the United States next war is, uh, fucking, I don't know when the next plane hits a building. <laughs> like, it's yeah, it, it's yeah. we don't know. Um, it could be. I don't think it will be with the Taliban. Um, the Taliban definitely isn't the ideal vision that the United States wants Uh, their equal rights are pretty non-existent and they have a lot of um, backwards in the sense of our society ways Uh of thinking, but there are a lot of things that we do agree on. Like um, take ISIS, for example, Uh, they do agree that ISIS is a problem and they're willing to work with the United States to fight ISIS. And I think that's great. Um, I just, you know, Pakistan does seem like it's somewhere. What are those oil places? You know, because the U.S. is like, we want one of these. Yeah, the price of gas has already gone up from like well, two seventy nine price... here to three nineteen. And I feel like, honestly, at this point, I kind of feel like those are gas companies taking advantage because it's kind of like when Biden came into office, he didn't change anything his first week in office, but magically gas went up a dollar. I feel like gas companies are kind of like, hey, people are expecting this to go up we'd be stupid not to raise the prices, you know? So I it's mean, kind of, it, but I don't know the technical reasoning for it. I don't know if oil trade has 
slowed down since the Taliban took control? I honestly don't know. I would have to talk to an economist or something. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, world trade has not slowed down yet. China and Russia have our China, Russia, and India have already started negotiating with the Taliban to get mineral and um, resource rights, of, of course, in the course. country to help develop it. But um, which they need because right now they have zero trade. And I've been reading about the economy in Afghanistan mm-hmm. right now, and it, you know this is a fresh nation. We just saw the birth of a nation, and oh, right gee. now they're they're kind of at ground zero again. We have. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've seen but they also way. have. Um, sorry, Levi, go ahead. No, go ahead, go ahead. They have ninety percent of the entire world's opium supply, which, even though opium is known as the thing that makes heroin and mm-hmm. you know other bad drugs, it also makes pharmaceutical drugs. Mm-hmm. So they yep. now hold ninety percent of the world's most valuable plant. Yeah. So uh, they will be perfectly fine that way. Their country is also naturally rich in minerals and valuable things such as like lithium. And I'm pretty sure they do have oil. They are one of the oil countries. So they are going to be perfectly fine, but they are going to be selling all of them and all of those mineral rights to China because China has already started doing it. China already well, did the same thing with all the surrounding countries and Pakistan. I mean, you know. You really have two world leaders to choose from. One just fought you for 20 years and the other one didn't really do anything. You know, and I wouldn't even say one because we'll talk about it here in a second. The war in Afghanistan was not the United States versus the Taliban. It was a coalition of dozens of nations in NATO versus the Taliban. Mm-hmm. Um, but like with every NATO war, the U.S. <laughs> takes the bulk of it. Um, but we're going to move on to this day in history so we can get to the main topic of the show. And, boys, I found this kind of interesting. Did you know, on this day, uh, this is September 9th. So on September 9th in 1776, our nation was renamed from the United Colonies to the United States of America. I did not know that. I did not know we were called the United Colonies of America at first. So we are the UCA. (laughs) The UCA. Oh, I'm yeah. happy they changed it. I'm, uh, you know, that that would have been really, you know, that, that kind of sucks. <laughs> UC, hey, God bless the good old UCA. Yeah, it just, yeah. USA just kind of yeah. rolls off the tongue a little better. Uh, also, UCA, you're one letter away from a Southern California fo- uh, football team. So, uh, yeah, good joke, Andrew. That every Anyways. white girl, yeah, that every white girl in America wants to go to. For Ex- yeah, I want to be UCA. Anyways, um, we're going to move on to the main topic of the show, which, as we've discussed many times, is specifically the United States in Afghanistan. Guys, we have a new way of doing this. I have a list of topics I want to hit, or more questions I want to ask you. And, of course, uh, these questions are just starting points. Once the flow gets going and whatever you guys want to talk about, we will go into all that. Um, I do want to set the mood though or not the mood i want to set the starting point because it's 2001 or well it's 2021 20 years ago it was 2001 uh and actually two days from now september 11th in mm-hmm. the morning in new york city there will be a terrorist attack and there will also be a terrorist attack at the pentagon and then some field in was it virginia i think or pennsylvania one of those states up there of course we're talking about 9 11 Hijackers hijack four U.S. airliners. They crash into the north and southern Twin Towers in New York City. They hit the Pentagon, and then the fourth one is thwarted by passengers. It crashes into a field. Over 2,000 Americans die, and it begins America's longest war against not the Taliban, but Al-Qaeda. Now, guys, could you tell me who we are actually fighting in Afghanistan. Because I feel like the lines were blurred around 2008-ish, especially around 2011 when we quote-unquote finished the mission and then we don't really know. So if you could lay out for me the sides, who's on the United States side, who's on the Afghani side. And we're not talking about Afghani citizens that we supported, obviously. We're talking about our enemies at the time. Because this was 20 years ago. We have people that are in college now 
that we're not alive <laughs> when this happened. Mm-hmm. Um, so just kind of lay it out for me. Mm-hmm. What are the sides? What are the causes? What are the causes? And oh. I will, yeah, because I mean, obviously, nine eleven was okay. the major well, cause. Still... I don't know if you got any more causes or oh, something. Oh, definitely. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. So, Levi, do you want to take it away and start uh, off? I can. Um, I can kind of like. I can do like the background and set the story up for Matthew if you would like to do that. Sure. Yeah, I'm down. Okay, awesome, awesome. So what are the causes for so-and-so? As we said, the biggest one, of course, 9-11. But let's let's take it back. Let's 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 go back. Let's go way back. No, 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 wait, wait, hang on a second, hang on a second. No, you went too far back. No, why why are Romans in why are Romans in Afghanistan? Come on, <laughs> or it says, hit, hit the forward button. Okay, there we go. There we go. Stop. Stop right there. Okay. What year are we? Nineteen seventy nine. There we go. We're at nineteen seventy nine. In nineteen seventy nine, the former Soviet Union invades Afghanistan due to um, Mujahideen fighters trying to um, st- um, begin a revolution against the puppet government that the puppet communist government that the Soviet Union had in place and was essentially supporting um, the Russians fight in Afghanistan for almost till like I believe like 1988 or 1989 like almost 10 years and what goes on is, internationally is that um, America sees this and thinks, well, you know, we'll have to support the Muhadin. And one of the uh, many um, group, sorry, one of the many uh, followers and leaders was a young man from Saudi Arabia, Osama bin Laden, who came from a wealthy family. Um, and he was a part of the Muhadin and had direct access and talked to CIA officials in the 1980s. And they secure arms deals. The uh, there's the classic joke about how a Muhadin fighter only needs two things in this world: a, a Quran and a Stinger missile launcher. <laughs> classic. <laughs> those those uh, listen. The uh, <laughs> the Russian MiGs are extraordinary, awesome um, fight, fighter helicopters, except for when a heat-seeking missile, sorry, missile. Uh, takes them out <laughs> so <laughs> there's not really much they can do against that so what goes on is that the Mahadeen kind of like the United, the United States sorry kind of well, kind of like now kicks kicks out the Soviets Soviet Union at home everything's collapsing communism is falling the Soviet satellite states are wanting their own rights Poland Poland is one of the first ones that successful breaks away, and then all the others break away, and then there's the Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia is going to break away, so then the Serbian Bosnian wars will come. It, everything's a mess in Eastern Europe. So Russia pulls out, and then the Mujahideen, although fragmented and politically at least, because you know they don't know what they're going to do. Um, they will seize Kabul in 1996 and establish what many could consider the first Taliban government. So it's not wrong for us to say that the Taliban already had a presence in Afghanistan way before any of this. In fact, they already had a government. In Ta- Sorry, they already had a government in Afghanistan. Mm-hmm. before this new regime change and i will call it a regime because what this is is a militant terrorist organization establishing a government it is a regime yep but they they establish uh they establish um their first government in the 1990s and from then on out you know they have they actively work with al qaeda al qaeda remains a large um, network of probably one of the largest um, terrorist networks of the world at the time. I think it was the largest at the time, yeah. And it becomes kind of like the head honcho and has all the others kind of underneath it, like Hezbollah, um, Hamas, although a lot of people like to argue, is Hamas really a terrorist organization or is the, are they just a political party? Eh. Yeah. Um, uh, just a quick comparison uh, for people, you know, today and age that 
don't really understand Al Qaeda. It definitely was the ISIS of the early 2000s and late 90s, or the, all of the 90s actually. Um, how we talk about ISIS now, that was Al Qaeda back then. Hmm. Um, that big of an organization hitting targets across the globe, very well funded, very powerful. Very well funded. In fact, I believe at one point, uh, um, ISIS at their height was receiving six million dollars a day. That's a lot. That's a lot of money. Yeah, you can have, you can have an organization. Sorry, and yeah. You can have an organization run forever making that kind of cash. Mm-hmm. But anyway, so Al Qaeda, they remain great friends with their former Mujahideen allies and what now a Taliban um, governing force. So for when um, Osama bin Laden carries out his um, mass attack upon the United States with his Al Qaeda, with his fellow Al Qaeda oper- Al Qaeda operatives, what's the first thing that they got to do? Well, they got to go into hiding. And because they know someone's coming after them, <laughs> someone's coming after them. <laughs> you don't and, attack uh, the U.S. and just no, sit you there. Don't. You don't. And this, 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 I mean, we we can get into like the psychology of Osama, or why he did this. I know that we're talking about Afghanistan, but you know, I, I, I well, still I, I, it's I, the I just, war in Afghanistan. Feel, I think Osama is a big part of it. Yeah, yeah. No, I feel oh, like yeah. a lot of people are just part. so quick to. So quick to just say, oh well, Osama hated America. That's why he did it. Well, this it's there's more to it than that. Um, he hated the American influence mm-hmm. that was happening upon um, his nation in Saudi Arabia. He hated um, the fact that Western powers could dictate um, how the Middle East basically does its business. He hated the fact that Western influence was desecrating um, the 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 traditions of Islam, as far as he could see, and. He saw the United States as this big evil empire expanding and was eventually going to expand and take over his, his homeland. So what does he decide to do? He wants to prove to the world that America isn't the good guys. He wants to prove to the world that America will speak the language of violence in a way that's so unforgivable, so appalling, that everybody will look at them and say, hey, these aren't the policemen of the world. These aren't people that just protect their allies. These are people who will essentially evade without reason, cause death, destruction, and will just leave after you know mission accomplished. And I'm not saying any of that's true. I'm just saying that's, yeah. probably, that's what Osama thought. Definitely. Uh, ide- ideologically, yeah. Ideologically. And he succeeds. To a point. <laughs> to a point, to a point. I he would does, argue. Um, he, I'll just, just finish. He does make America speak the language of violence. Yes. Long and term, we did. Definitely. Yes. But how much of that is right, you know? Yeah. Because uh, I would argue um, if this was his goal was to be like, hey, look, the United States is the bad guys. Hate them after 9-11. He definitely failed in that aspect because mm-hmm. the United States – a had never been more united in the homeland and B had so much sympathy from other first world nations. Uh, Mm. Obviously smaller nations and enemy nations. um, They rejoiced because like, yeah, America finally got hit, which I kind of get to a point because, you know, we've been in so many wars and like the mainland U S has really never been affected. I would, I think, isn't nine 11 the biggest, Attack on a United States yeah. state it, since the Civil War. Uh, one of the biggest attacks by an opposing force. Since, by an opposing uh, force, because I know Pearl a, Harbor since, wasn't yeah. a state; that was a territory. Um, well, it, it, on U.S. No, soil, technically. No, yeah. it. Nine Eleven is the biggest civilian casualty. Yes. Ever yeah. on United States soil, Pearl Harbor yeah. is considered the biggest military military attack, like on, attack on U.S. soil. Gotcha. Because okay. even when we were in other wars, like the American, the American Mexican War, we it beat doesn't happen the fuck out of Mexico. And yeah, everybody remember the Alamo, but we only lost like a hundred or so men there mm-hmm. when we were fighting and, thousands. We and, you lost know, there, thousands of men at Pearl Harbor. And and there was the War of eighteen twelve too, but that's eh. it's eh. it's still kind of like the 
begin that might as well be the Revolutionary War at that time. Honestly, it's so close to 1776. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it, regardless, 9/11 was the biggest civilian casualty period in U.S. history, at least modern history, we can say. And you know, if I am all these other nations, if I am North Korea, if I am Vietnam, if I am Afghanistan, if I am all these other nations that the United States has been involved in, it's there must be a point where you're like, how's it feel? You know, you've come over here. You because of you, you have killed many innocent people. You have caused war in our lands. Now we're finally seeing it on your end. It doesn't feel that good. So maybe that was kind of like what Osama was going for, for sympathy wise being like, you know, they're the bad guys. They deserve this. I don't think it worked. However, at least in hindsight, I was four years old when 9-11 happened. So, you know, not fully cognitively there, but I do recall at least looking back and reading headlines from around the world and, you know, seeing interviews and stuff that there was quite a bit of support for the United States at the time when that happened so much that when the U.S. went to war, they didn't go alone. They went with NATO and we had the entire modern war or modern world kind of backing them up mm. to a certain degree. Um, so there's, there's, there, there's that famous George Bush line. Either you, you are with us or you are against us. Yep. And <laughs> I don't know how well that line worked out because there's a lot of people that were not with us. Um, and we're, we're going to definitely get into that later because uh, it also has to do with kind of with um, Vietnam too. Because I feel like there's a lot of similarities, especially, you know, with the ending, how we pulled out and kind of left this nation defenseless and they got taken over again. There's a lot of similarities there. But I think as a whole, Afghanistan and Vietnam are kind of similar in a lot a lot more ways than people might think. But we'll get to that. Yeah. Um so Osama bin Laden was educated. I'm pretty sure it was in the UK. He went to school. So he has a Western education. And basically from what I'm putting together from his motives, he wanted to cause a Vietnam in Afghanistan. The man's a complete deranged um, psychopath at that point because he is still wanting to get his point across to that the United States is bad because the only war that I can really say the United States was 100% truly the bad guy in was Vietnam yeah, because I say Vietnam. Yeah. All of, we used napalm. We were close bombing. We were destroying entire villages, Agent wiping Orange. people off. The, we're, Agent, we're gonna, yeah, Agent Orange turning out in pink. We will have an episode about Vietnam where we get – that's going to be at least a two-parter because <laughs> Vietnam is – Oh, God. I'd say Vietnam. there's a lot of similarities between Afghanistan and Vietnam. Vietnam is a whole – it's a whole fucking yeah. thing. But <laughs> like I'm just saying thing. – I'm saying that's what Osama bin Laden yeah. mm-hmm. was trying to get. He was trying to get sympathy somewhat that way and paint the United States to be the bad guy in the way of Vietnam because Vietnam now is united – they're together. We do trade with Vietnam, and we yeah. talk about our past. It's, pro- it's a prospering nation. Yeah, it's a prospering um, nation. It's the one mistake one that the, only... the United States made. It's communism, yeah, but it was not Chinese or Russian-backed communism. It's one of the only communist nations left on Earth as well, and it works there. Um, you know, and that's 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 how it is with a lot of these. Well, well the, what has been and will probably forever will be with um, nations who adopt um, Karl communism or Marxist ideologies mm. is that they will always, they will always have their own flavor of communism. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just like with capitalism, not mm. every nation is going to be the exact same type of capitalist. I would argue that, and again, we don't have to get into this. This is just my own opinion that we see communist nations. Are they fully communist? You could argue that they are kind of, capitalist in nature now and they do have those origins of communism yeah, but they're not so fully I, communism I, 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 yeah i think i think we can talk about that later yeah yeah but um so with that being said though before you move on about osama's mm-hmm. goal of making the united states he wanted another vietnam um he wanted the u.s to look bad we're only a few weeks out of this war but would you say that he was kind of successful in that because i don't see a lot of people 
seeing the United States as a hero right now. I see a lot of people uh, quite the opposite. I will say that what I said earlier, he was successful in getting the United States to speak the language of violence. That's what he was successful in. Now, I, I'm not saying that the United States should have turned the other cheek and that SEAL Team 6 should have went into whatever little fucking thing he was in, shot him dead in the fucking chest or whatever. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying here is that we showed the world our true colors of what having a military like the United States has. Having this... We, we can pretend all day that we love patriotism, we, lo- we love our democracy, we love our republic, but we really showed the world this is what an empire does. At least that's what Osama wanted. He wanted, he wanted, people, to, he wanted people to see that. You see this nation where everybody's equal, everybody has the right to vote and all that. Look at what they can do at any time. Yeah. They can, look at what they can do. Yeah. I would um, concur with a lot of the points on that. Um, I would say that most of the world is not mad at the United States right now. They are mad at the United States government right now. They are not mad at the people because well, we've, all, we've all wanted out of Afghanistan for a while, too. It was just since about, Obama. Since yeah, Obama. It since was Obama, just yeah. about how to get out. It and, was really 2011 when people you know, were like, okay, we did it. Let's leave. <laughs> yeah, and it's been working slowly towards that. Exactly. But the problem was leaving a vacuum, like what exactly happened. But the problem, like similarly with Vietnam, is the government was completely corrupt. There was no accountability. There was no training. They didn't. The um, we cut off the air support for the defending army, and they crumbled because the. The Taliban, even though they are using outdated equipment, they just know the land better and they have better tactics. And the way they work is when they take over an area, they gain more people from that area that are willing to come fight for them. Definitely, so they yeah. just it's, steamrolled it's, the whole it's, country it's just, faster than anybody predicted. Exactly. It's 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 almost mind boggling. Well, some to, to some people it's mind boggling, but it's it's we have at. Mil- United States military trained Afghani soldiers who received American training of this get, were given American weapons. All this, this, and that. As soon as they saw the Taliban, they just a lot of them were just, we're done. Yeah, yeah. But I just want to reiterate that the world is not mad at the United States people ourselves, and that we all wanted out. It was just a way to get out, and now they're everybody's trying to pin the blame on the president before. Biden, but no, it is well, his fault. He well, caused this. Well, personally, no. I pinned the blame on the last four presidents um, because all of them, well, that were, while they're in power, maybe not. Maybe I have not a rebuttal the, to the both of you. <laughs> all right, I look forward to it. Um, but just let me, get, let me get this in real quick. Maybe not the first one, and I'm not saying what George Bush did was perfect, but when you're starting off a war, the, the the Afghanistan that we see today, um, or not today anymore, it's gone now, but the uh, Islamic Republic of Afghanistan, which is what came out of um, the Taliban's Afghanistan, and I think 2003, I believe, is when the government was formed. Um, that Those were the origins, and it was kind of like with South Vietnam, again, such a great comparison, where the United States was like, okay, we're going to make you a nation. We're, we're kind of nation building. Um, the United States really likes to nation build, but also say, no, we're not. Well, hang on, say, hang on, say, well, okay, go ahead. At the same time, they like to say, no, 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 we're, we're not nation building, but they kind of are in their actions. Okay, so- Regardless, um, but if, if I am placing blame on anyone, I definitely would, because it's, it's, again, it's hard to even place blame on a single person because there's just so much going on. And That's like I said, there's, this is a conflict where it wasn't just the United States. This is, nato involved they had does anyone know i mean do either of you guys know how many nations were involved because it, it was a almost lot all, almost all it was a, lot. Lot, a lot of nations and i would argue that or not even argue but i would just propose that those nations that did not put in a full effort to fight terrorism and did not stay stick with it because every other nation except i know great britain was there to the end 
Um, there's actually there's a few Canada. that were there till the end. Canada, Canada was, was. The end. but all the other ones that left earlier, you can easily place blame on them as well, being like, you didn't stay around, you didn't help out. Where were you? You know? Yeah. Um, no, no, no. And, I'm and, just and then with the president, you. and then with the president just, thing, there were things that actions that could have been taken in the Obama era, in the Trump era, and now well, the Biden era is very new, and we saw the action that he took, and it was an action. I, <laughs> it's I, debatable if you agree or not. I am just no. I am saying, and that is the whole point of this right now. Is this is strictly my opinion, but I consider it an accurate one and a dis dissection of the situation that happened over there it was carried out completely wrong it was a bumbling mess we didn't we did not only not get the people out that were helping us we didn't even get all of our fucking people out we didn't get yeah. american citizens out no it's it's unacceptable and everybody was saying that it was trump's plan it was it was originally trump's plan because he was negotiating with them but Biden just fucking pulled out, literally just tried to big dick it, fucking tried to whip out his sausage on the table, found out, oh, no, I don't have a sausage. I've got half a hot dog and that Taliban's a big hungry dog and it wasn't fucking scared at all. And they just came right in and have been doing whatever the fuck they want. They still currently have people, sympathizers to the United States, people that helped us, translators, scouts even somewhat spies they have them held there and they are torturing them and beating them and killing their families and the united states citizens i don't know if that's happening to the citizen citizens of the united states but i know that that's happening to the people that helped us and that's unforgivable because there should have been an easy plan to get out when you had those bases you keep those bases or if you're going to leave them you bomb them into oblivion. You do not just give up that strategic position without a fight. You have to give yourself a strategic withdrawal. It's a bad example, but you have to do what the Germans were doing. You have to do a skillful retreat. When they were fighting the Russian army... I was, was going to say, yeah, you do what the Germans did. Because, yeah. I mean, I, again, Vietnam, they that's were, what, what we did in Afghanistan is what we did in Vietnam. We left all this shit there and just kind of bounced. Yeah. Exactly. And the biggest thing is like, I'm, yeah, I'm pissed about the $2 trillion worth of the taxpayer's money that was just left there for them to take. But I'm more pissed off of the human life that is sympathetic and actually cares about the United States and wants to have a better life and helped us that got left there. And the president was just like, oh, I don't care. That was two days ago. Get over it. Yeah. Well, I mean, he didn't say that verbatim, but. Yeah, he said, no, verbatim, he said, come on, man. That was like four or five days ago verbatim you can go look up the audio it's fucked up levi you had a no no, no. rebuttal or not no, even a rebuttal you no, had another no, no. you had something that you wanted to say no, i have a different take i have a different okay. take go ahead um so uh first and foremost as you said earlier not all the blame can be put on one person in fact um yes it can actually <laughs> and uh, in this situation Yes, yes, and that one person is a uh, good old uh, W. Good old, good old, good old W. w. Bush. Good old W. Um, Fair. He put us in this mess. <laughs> he wasn't gonna take us out of it. How can we be mad? No, we can't be. But how can we argue? And I'm not just talking about like us. I'm talking about like just regular people. Yeah, you're saying other Americans. Yeah, I'm when you say we, we're, you're talking about people yeah. in general. Yeah, I'm talking about how can they argue and bitch and complain about what's happened? And of course, what Matthew said that all should have been done. That all everything that, that yes, all that. However, there was no way this was not going to be a mess. Yeah, there's no way. There's no way that this was going to have problems. There's no way this is going to be a whole disaster yeah. of, of, of something. But how can we really argue over that the last three presidents have inherited this, this ball of shit and, and, and horrid and just, 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 just 
this 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 this, this, this absolute mess. This, how how can we expect them to take that ball and turn it into gold? Yeah. I agree. Listen, no, listen, listen. I'm about to finish. Okay, go ahead. Because I feel, I do feel strongly about this. Because we have Obama, who sets the stage, gets the stage set up, set up. We have, we have him turning on the lights, picking out the curtains. We have him setting up the stage. Then we have Trump, who choreographs it all. He gets the audiences together. He cuts the deals. He gets the fat cats to sign his petitions. He he gets the audience to the to the stage. Then we have Biden. And for better or worse, we can say he's uh he he's 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 like the little puppet. For better or worse, because you know I, I I I don't think that that man makes his own speeches. I don't think so. I, I don't think so. I don't, uh, so I don't I don't think so. So we could say that he's like the little puppet. And he's simply executing the performance. Yep, I, I agree. He's simply ex- he's simply doing what he's simply executing the performance. Yeah, because this withdrawal date was actually it was pushed back. I think originally in the Trump deal with the Taliban, it was in May, and then he got it extended to August. Um, and you know we we've jumped the whole war here to the end, but these are uh, with the Afghanistan war. It is really three different points you have the beginning point where the united states and the coalition go into afghanistan and they take most of the nation um at least they take a lot of the major cities and the centralized afghanistan but a lot of the outskirts are left to um for the taliban to hide in and that is kind of where a lot of the conflicts are fighting is out in the mountainous areas and the uh, farmland and things like that while the u.s and the new afghanistan government hold the cities and the central power um, and it goes like that for a while. There are terrorist attacks constantly. Um, and when I say constantly, I mean you can look it up monthly. Just bombings in hospitals, bombings in schools, bombings in uh, markets, bombings everywhere, bus bombings, suicide bombings, like this stuff. And, and that is a thing about the Taliban because we are talking about now the Taliban is in control of this nation. And they're saying a lot of different things. They are changing their ways a bit. Women are actually allowed to go to school now. Um, which was something the United States and the old Afghanistan government really brought forth because I think before it was like an abysmal percent went to school. Now it is a higher number, but they are, you know, separating the classrooms. Uh, Women have to cover themselves up again. So there are those old things there, but there are some, dare I say, promising things. You know, they're not reverting completely back to the old way, which is good. But at the same time, these, this is the, idea government that was suicide bombing its own civilians in response to the United States. And I feel like any nation that does that, they're probably not the good guys. Um, But that goes on for a long time. And then we do kill Osama bin Laden in 2011. And that wasn't even in Afghanistan. (laughs) Uh, That was in, where was that? Pakistan is where he was hiding. Yeah, it was in Pakistan, and Pakistan knew he was there for the whole time and was just hiding yeah. him. Yeah, and and the thing is, the Taliban knew too. Um, for people that might not understand the relationship between the Taliban and Osama bin Laden, um, am I sounding all buzzy to you guys? Do I sound okay? Yeah. Yeah, you're no, all right. No, there's a little bit of buzz, but I mean, I don't think it's too bad. Okay, that was weird. It just came out of nowhere. Um, but there it is again. Is that me? I don't know. Um, People who might not understand, though, it's kind of like how Levi was setting it up, where there's this history between Osama and um, the Taliban and Al Qaeda. And I think they had some sort of like agreement or some some sort of pact to where when 9-11 happened, the United States basically told the Taliban, give us Osama. Like he needs to be tried. Um, And interestingly, I found a poll that was – taken in late 2001, I think a month after 9-11. And this was actually a worldwide poll, not just the United States. And it was talking about Osama bin Laden. And it asked um, pollers, should Osama be tried and put to court? Should there be like military intervention and then like some other option? And in 2001, the majority was military. But it was a close majority. I think 40-something percent said he should be tried in court. And 
no, you should not invade Afghanistan for this. Um, of course, emotions were high at the time for a lot of people. And you know, the support of the war was at its peak in 2001 and just slowly went down, ironically, until August of this year where support for the United States and Afghanistan kind of went back up a little bit. I think it's because the news started reporting on it again and showing what was happening. Like, hey, look, life wasn't too bad in Afghanistan, but now the Taliban have it. And, you know, people are closing down shops and taking down posters of women and, you know, all this other stuff. And people kind of started like, oh, maybe we should do something. So I just wanted to touch on the relationship between Al Qaeda and the Taliban real quick. So the Al Qaeda and the Taliban helped each other to take over Afghanistan after the Soviets were gone and the Muhaddin took control of the country. So the Taliban was fighting with the Muhaddin because they have different doctrine beliefs. And then Al Qaeda came in and they're just a purely terrorist organization, but have the same doctrine beliefs as the Taliban so they helped them, and within, I think it was a year or so, they took control of 90% of the country and pushed the Muhaddin up into, like, the northeast, like, little bit of Afghanistan, mm-hmm. and then yeah. assassinated the leader of the Muhaddin shortly thereafter. And at this time, they were seeking um, the assistance. The Muhaddin was seeking assistance from the United States. Mm-hmm. Yes. And he was in there. It would fell on deaf ears. Sorry, I'm just trying to find the guy's name real quick because I mean he was. It's what Ahmed Saha Musa Musud Musad. It might be Musad. I don't. I no I'm sorry. I don't speak <laughs> Arabic. My bad. But I didn't even know it's Ahmed Saha. I can't say his last name, but he was the leader of the Muhaddin militia and he was assassinated in the summer of 2001, just a few months before the attack. Before 9-11, yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's because he was t- he was fighting back. The Muhaddin are really the ones that fought the Soviets. The Muhaddins are like what you think of when the movies and the novelizations about the heroic Arabic warriors, like the mounted horseback going Mm -hmm. through the mountains, coming down, fighting the infidels, that's more of what the Muhaddin was. The Taliban was more of an, was an upstart kind of maybe, you know, somehow created by the United States and CIA but I'm not going to yeah. get in depth on that. Same thing with maybe Al Qaeda. But anyways, the Muhammad. I, I, I read about that too, and I was like, I'm going to need more info on this. <laughs> but um, Osama bin Laden came over and made the headquarters for Al Qaeda because the Taliban and Al Qaeda are a multinational, multinational, and multination organization there's mm-hmm. taliban and al-qaeda sex like in different countries specifically i think there's some in it's not sudan it's libya there's mm-hmm. some in north other places in north africa and central africa and there might be one or two more in the middle east as well but it is it's a actually pretty terrifying as to touch earlier with the power of the terrorist organization al-qaeda it had a far-reaching effect and still does have a good stronghold of power and influence on the world stage but osama set up his headquarters for al-qaeda in afghanistan and was protected by the taliban who were the rulers of afghanistan at that time the government so he, they were in turn harboring terrorists and enemies of the state to the United States. Yeah. And, and that is the, but that is the reasoning the United States gave for the invasion of Afghanistan. The, hey, you we, were harboring. We asked, them, we, we asked them to hand them over first and they were like, no, it was like, all right. It's true. 
and I, this kind of leads into my next question, but, uh, you know, is, I, I guess I'll just ask it. Um, do you guys think the United States was justified for starting this war, building off of that and knowing what we know and what we've discussed so far? Do you think this is a justified war? Um, and you can look at it from the whole thing. You can look at it from it's September 12th, 2001. Is this war justified? However you want to look at it, do you guys think this is? And Matthew, you just talked a lot, so Levi, I'll kick it over to you first. Okay. So. Crap, I am so sorry. I forgot what. It was. Can you uh, give me the topic again? I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, you're good. Um, do you think this war was justified for the United mm. States? Do you think it, it was no, no, what are you, I mean, okay, okay, yes, originally, we're going there to, um, well, that's what I was asking, hunt up? down, okay, so yeah, no, 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 from no, the no, beginning no, no. of our whole picture, do you think, either way, this is justified for us to go into Afghanistan, not just to find Osama bin Laden and take out Al-Qaeda, but to do what we did, I mean, yes, you can justify it, but is, should we have done it, no, well, why? Look what we have to show for it. <laughs> no, I know. Look what I, we have I, to show. For, that's what I. That's my. Yeah, no. Well, I'm asking. Explain it for the audience. Like, like, what do we have to show for it? Why? What do we have to show? Uh, what I said earlier: two trillion dollars blown, twenty five hundred American soldiers dead. So, oh God knows how many Afghanis have been killed or wounded or whatever. And then, bada bing, bada boom, uh, we leave with fucking shit running down our legs. And guess what? We have this terrible terrorist organization that throws acid in people's faces and does all other kinds of bullshit and now they have a whole fucking regime and are now getting to play with the big dogs such as china and russia and everyone else yeah, they're legitimate now they're yeah yeah uh matthew <laughs> how do you feel about uh do you think the war in afghanistan was justified for the united states to go in and to to do what it did and then to also do what it did for as long as it did, do you think any of it is justified? Yes. I feel there was a certain point to when it was the right time for us to get out. And it was around 2006 and 2007 because we, we crushed them. We absolutely obliterated those fuckers in like the first year. It was... It was a war. It was very lopsided. It was yeah. It, yeah. it was kind of like because we fought. It was similar to the Iraq conflict, but it wasn't even close to that scale either. Like Operation Desert Storm, Desert Shield, it, it wasn't even close to that because at least the Iraq army, Iraq had like a full fledged army. It might have been outdated Soviet tanks, but they, they still had an army. had an yeah. They still had an army. And we went in there, and we f we crushed them within a few months with a with them having an entire army. But we um, going into Afghanistan. It was when it comes to a straight moral question of what is the right thing to do with that. We did need to go in there. I would have personally rather them just send in SEAL Team 6 and grab that bastard and some, maybe some of the officials and drag him back and have like an online public execution of him. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> I, I mean... I was with you and then you said online public execution. I was like, whoa. <laughs> That's a little like, Um... Uh, it's a little extreme that he took down two fucking skyscrapers in the middle of New York. I, I agree, but you don't want your nation to stoop to that level, you know? <laughs> like, that's what the I terrorists do. They do public beheadings online and stuff. You don't we want the U.S. It's not to... a beheading. No, you but just still. injection or electric chair him. <laughs> what? Stop Publicly. being a wimp. Stop um, being a wimp. He, cre he did crimes against humanity. Crimes. I mean, he killed thousands. Yeah, but they didn't even publicly execute. Uh, Mutilated. Um, they didn't even publicly execute Saddam Hussein. So you know, why would they do that for for Saddam Osama? Hussein. But anyways, yeah, that think, wasn't public. I think his own people killed him. I think his I own think people his own, did too. Yeah, his own people. <laughs> I'm pretty sure him. it was his yeah, own people. I've actually hung uh, him in public and dragged his body around. Little side, side note: I've seen that video. 
where they hang them. I've seen that video. It's wild. Yeah. Yeah. Someone recorded it. Um, yeah, no, that's that's literally what I was talking about doing, and you're like, no, we can't do no, that. No, no, like it's well, kind of just a justice thing at that. Well, point. Well, what I thought you meant was like, ah, CNN have the camera rolling, live news, Channel Six, whatever. It's like that's probably what you were saying. I don't know. I personally think that's a little too extreme, but I can see where you're coming from, especially if it was like 2002. I think the U.S. probably would have liked that. Actually, <laughs> they would have been like, yeah, oh yeah, um, no, the world definitely would have liked that because yeah. the guy. But you, the way people look at it with 9-11 is that 2,000 people died. But actually, it's much worse than that. 2,000 people died initially. All the firefighters, the first responders, the people who were just caught in the cloud of debris and dust that came are now have now had a terrible life afterwards oh, yeah. because they have to deal with medical problems. So this has affected tens of thousands of people and it has um, in effect killed tens of thousands of people because they are dying killed, from these illnesses i don't know if it's killed that much but if you do look oh, yeah. up uh deaths in the united states i ironically just looked this up um just like last week for no reason honestly i was just, i think it was some with covid like uh the death rate of covid and stuff I was like i'm interested uh if you look up like fatalities in the u.s they'll have like car accidents they'll have a pandemic they'll have heart disease you know all this stuff but they do have 9-11 related illnesses there and i think last year like 20 something people died from 9-11 related illnesses and this is something that just keeps coming up people are still dying 20 years later from yeah. this from this I, I almost called it a battle it was not a battle this terrorist attack um so yeah it is it is a uh, way more than 2,000 people that 2,000 people is and just the initial one they just recently started classifying it as 9-11 related illnesses yeah. mm -hmm. because Real quick, who is the guy? He's from Comedy Central. Used to have I a know show. What you're talking about yeah, uh, the Daily Show. John Stewart. He's John a Stewart. big, big advocator for it. He, he is. He, he goes to Congress like every year, saying, "Please make a bill that gives medical things." And you know, the United States loves nothing more than its own people, but we won't do things like that. Lies, um, lies. <laughs> but well, no, that's well, what I'm saying. Well, isn't, like, that, isn't that the thing that he wanted? Like some type of medical bill and they won't pass it or something yeah he wants um it to be for all first responders and all people affected therein by it because it was the dust from the building that collapsed that really is killing these people because it got into their lungs and it's just destroying them giving them cancers all types of diseases and whatnot but he's trying to get them to where they don't have to pay for medical bills like, mm -hmm. hey, yeah, let's yeah, take that's care of these was. people, yeah. and they're not doing it. They're just pushing it to the side, like, whatever. These people are going to be dead soon anyways. And I'm, yeah. I personally, hey, take two more dollars out of my check every, every, every week. I don't care. Do it. Those people did it, deserved it. They went through hell. They had to see literal, yeah. a literal, I can't imagine watching a skyscraper just collapse and then I see can't. another one right after it. Dude, I I, I watching people flung again, all over the place. We were we were four. Even the people that just watched it on TV, I can't I can hardly imagine it. Like I can kind of imagine it because you know we grew up with this when we were in elementary school. 9-11 was a big deal still, you know? Like in school it was like, oh, it's September eleventh, moment of silence. Play the national anthem. We're gonna talk about this. Even in middle school and it's kind of even in high school still. No, we we're didn't gonna talk school. about this. Um I remember we had like, where were you when 9-11 happened? We had that assignment, which, you know, for us is like I don't fucking daycare know. or something. I don't fucking know. <laughs> yeah, <it's four>. right? <laughs> you know, this I'm assignment fucking... doesn't really work anymore. Pooping um, my pants, maybe? I don't know, but, bro. But it was still... Playing with Legos? I don't fucking know. <laughs> it was, it was yeah, still it's terrible. Such, yeah, um... We're not going to... Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to like laugh at this, by the way. This well, is, yeah, of course, no. 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 We're, we're laughing at where we were. Like, yeah, it's okay. a bit past our time. Yeah. But like no, it's no ill will. We're laughing at our own. Like, well, for us, where the fuck really were we? We don't know. Yeah, no. and I've just I've just noticed because like even now, um, I, guess, I I don't know about you guys, but for me, whenever September hit, like September first, I was like, oh shit, nine eleven's right here. Like we got to go through this again. It's and it kind of got depressing. It was like you know, it was only ten years ago. This shit's still with us. There's still you know where were you the whole thing is where were you and it was this big 
like um coming together of americans and now i, I had to tell susan we we're sitting on the couch i was like uh, 9 11 is like three days <laughs> and she laughed and i was like i just remember this was always such a big deal and now i feel like it's not anymore is 20 years the point where it's like we do remember it and we'll be like oh yeah that was very sad and i really feel for those people and that's a terrible thing that happened Kind of like Pearl Harbor. Oh, that's a terrible thing. That was I very still, sad. I mean, and then we I move still on. remember Pearl Harbor. So every or, December 7th. Well, yeah, of course. And I think we're of a different cut. We have a history podcast, for God's sake, you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but you know, you know what I mean? Like, do you guys feel that at all? And we'll go back to Afghanistan here in a second because I do have a couple more questions. But do you guys feel like 9-11 specifically, but also the Afghanistan war and what it all stood for and meaning, do you feel like that's all kind of lost some sort of mean- meaning as we've gotten farther away from it? Because I would argue that before the pullout in August, and no sexual jokes there, uh, before the pullout in August <laughs> of, uh, <laughs> you know, Weak everyone. pullout game. <laughs> um, there was no coverage of Afghanistan. I would argue the whole Trump administration, aside from him being asked, are you pulling people out of Afghanistan? Are we leaving Afghanistan? No one was reporting on it. And there were still suicide bombings happening. There was still conflict. Uh, uh, what, what do you call it? Um, shots fired between each other. Um, I don't know what you – there's a specific term for that. Uh, but you know what I mean. There's still things happening, but the news wasn't reporting on it. It didn't seem like the general population cared either. We were more worried about – I don't know, taxes or something. Um, so what do, what do you guys think about that? Has it lost its meaning over time? Or its importance? Has it lost its importance over time? Levi, you can um, go first. I mean, it, it's hard to say. You know, and this isn't it's... personal either. I'm talking more public opinion. Do you think like it's The lost? public opinion of yes. like how this... Uh, you know, have we, have we lost that patriotism? Yeah. You know, when's the last time we can all really think of when we legitimately saw Americans rejoice? And my f- first thought that comes to mind is when Osama bin Laden I was, gonna say 2011. was, killed, was yeah. killed. That is, That was the moment where it felt like everyone was like, we fucking did it, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, I remember – how people remember where they were in 9-11, I remember where I was when that mm-hmm. happened. I I remember that day to I mean, the T. I, I remember waking up the next morning. It's all, all on the news. Mm-hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, we got yeah. it. I was in my bedroom, and I had that stupid big silver TV I'm looking at right now. Mm-hmm. And for whatever reason, I think like there was a football game on or something the night before – or, I don't know. I was, I, I was into Sports Center at that point. So I had the TV on, and then that news thing popped up. And then I went to school, and I was in my history class, and he had it up on in the corner, and we were watching it. And it's just like, I, you know, I remember everything about that day. And it did feel like you're kind of every American, th- every American agreed that was the right thing to do, you know? Mm-hmm. So, so it has this lost its meaning since, since, since that moment. I mean, I'll, t- I'll take it's, it. It's, it. I mean, it's depressing to say, but you know, I, I think so. Yeah, and I, I think we're I think we're just ready to be done with it. I think so too, and I think a big Matthew. I'll, I'll, I'll give you um, a chance to answer too, but I do want to put in that I think a big component of it is the goal factor because when. The United States said it was going to war. I feel like a lot of the Americans had one goal in mind. Take out Osama bin Laden. He did this. He was the man in charge of this. He orchestrated all of this. The United States, and when I say that, I'm talking about the people, not the government. The people who were supporting the war were supporting it to get Osama bin Laden. The American people, for the most part, do not care what life was like in Afghanistan for those people. They do not care what the government is like there. You know, they do not care what rights they do and don't have. And, you know, you can sympathize with the human and being like, oh, that's awful. They should have equal rights. They should have all these freedoms and things like that. But do you want to go to war for it? Well, no, not really. (laughs) We had an objective, take out Osama bin Laden. And I think 
the government kind of changed the objective on that. I feel like their intent wasn't always just to get Bin Laden. And I think us staying there nine years after he died is evidence of that. And I think that's also where a lot of support kind of dropped off was like, why are we still there? You know, I, a lot of people, I know a lot of people would ask that when we talked about the war in Afghanistan, people would be like, yeah, why are we still at war? I thought we finished this. Um, but Matthew, I'll let you uh, go ahead and give me your answer on how you feel about people supporting and the public perception and all that. So I would just say in general, yes, People have stopped caring about 9-11. In a majority in the United States, people have stopped caring. I know that New York and New York City especially still remember it because it's kind of a big reminder. Yeah. I mean, especially with the uh, like, memorial now. But I don't. Sorry, Luke, sorry, go sorry, ahead. Sorry. Real quick. Okay, sorry, 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 sorry. Um, I kind of misinterpreted that. Uh, I, I thought we were saying uh, talking about Afghanistan. My bad, my bad. Sorry, I keep getting a message on my phone. I have to like it's, it's about like pre law club and shit like that. Sorry, you good? But yeah. uh, anyway, sorry. Um, but like, okay, so we're saying, we're talking about nine eleven. <sighs> okay, kind of, but like you would be surprised about how many people hide it. True, um, you would be surprised about how many Americans, even if they did not have family, um be affected by 9-11 directly, you'll be surprised about how many of them cry to themselves privately. You will be surprised. I'm not saying that we would do that because we like how we were kids. We didn't understand what was going on, probably doing whatever, but you would be surprised about how many of the adults or teenagers that were alive at that time, although they might not be like, you know, 9-11 is still like a huge, you know, whatever. Um, you will be surprised about how, much of a, what when did it happen it was on a monday or tuesday right i think it was tuesday because i always heard about people staying up late for monday night football okay so it was on a tuesday so how how much of a black tuesday that was for them mm -hmm. yeah so definitely and i i agree with you i do think that is something that people older than us definitely hold and kind of hide and, you know, they're not as open about it. And, of course, also, when you do have people born after 9-11 grow up, they're not going to be as understanding, sympathetic, um, emotional about it because they weren't there. They weren't alive, you know? Exactly. Um, e even with us, like, there's plenty of people our age who they don't remember. They don't know anything. They grew up in post-9-11, which growing up between – 2001 and 2007 was an interesting time. It was a time of rapid change, uh, a time of rapid political um, discord. It, it was it was a time. Um, but yeah, I just yeah, I wanted to see what you guys' opinions on that were. Now, we've talked about the war. We've talked about how the U.S. was the big component. Um, NATO was involved in this. And in typical NATO fashion, they pulled out. <laughs> like, oh, no. it's, it's how it kind of is with every single conflict. You see, like, oh, yeah, the British threw 200 troops. Canada threw 50 troops. New Zealand has two guys over there. The U.S. has 700,000. Um, Germany has 10. <laughs> and, and the U.S. stays there for 20 years. Yeah, it's just so real quick, um, I want to say, if you – Listeners as well, if you want to see a good movie that kind of describes the way that NATO works and how it has always worked and that it's not an exaggeration, on Netflix, there's a movie called The Seas of Siege of J.Dotville. It was the first intervention for NATO in a country, and it ended terribly, Yep, is all I can say. I don't know if you guys have watched it, but it's a bunch of about, I think, an Irish brigade. Mm -hmm. that got sent to the Congo and they all end up getting captured and ransomed back to their country. And they're dishonored because they lost, even though they were ill supplied, mm -hmm. not reinforced. They were, they, something else happened. It's just, it's a great movie to watch, to understand kind of how NATO works in its intervention ways. Yeah. NATO is a fantastic idea. In 1945, 
And I think its origins are great, and you can argue that it's kind of worked because we haven't had a world war since 1945. But in a lot of situations, like in Afghanistan, where if you want to have a country not be controlled by terrorists, you're going to need more than one country throwing in all of its support. You're going to need it. Like, it's just flat out, you're going to need more than that. Anyways, um, I digress. Uh, before I move on to the end here, is there anything else you guys want to touch up on in this uh, topic or, you know, hit on? Not really, no. No? All good. Matthew, anything else? Um, all I want to say is that the American troops that fought and died over in Afghanistan, I support them 100%. Exactly. I think the ideals that many of those men and women were fighting for, the better life, better quality of life, trying to give a piece of the United States to those people, and to also combat terrorism was a great thing to do, and it was the right thing to do. They just had poor leadership and poor execution, not to their fault, it, but to the fault of their superiors. And that, that's how to reiterate, the to touch war. on that last thing you guys talked about with the United States feeling, yeah, a lot of the older generation does, but the younger generation just is very disillusioned and doesn't seem to care. I still personally, when I saw that it was September, I'm like, oh, it's... 10 days until 9-11 now yeah um, and it's it's a somber thing for me because i see it as a bunch of innocent people that died i don't cry or really get emotional it's just puts me in the dumps a little bit i'm like yeah and then it brings up the whole thoughts of the afghan war and the debacle that's happened over the past 20 years with it and how it has been taken care of so poorly and now it's going to especially hit hard because of how bad it, it ended. truly ended because yeah. I thought about it could have ended really bad in a lot of different ways. This is probably one of the worst. There was a suicide bombing that killed 15 U.S. Marines, well, 15 U.S. service mer- members, many of the Marines, and hundreds of civilians yeah, over, at the airport. Over 200 civilians, which I do want to point out. That is something that is so, so. frustrating to me because I see yeah. – um, just people post. I, I don't care about the political affiliation. I see people post about like, you know, these 15 service members. Uh, you typically, they'll say like uh, the president's uh, – their blood is on the president's hands. It's their, it's his fault that these people died. Um, you know, these 15 people shouldn't have died. But they never mentioned the 200-plus civilians that died. Over 200 civilians died in that suicide bombing. But I swear, no one cares. They only care about the U.S. servicemen. I think that is a big problem, too, with this war, is that I don't want to put these deaths lightly because they're not at all. Mm. Whenever any military or actually anyone dies at all, it's usually a tragic thing unless it's like Hitler or something. Um, But it is kind of amazing that you can fight a war for 20 years and have less than 3,000 casualties. Like, to me, looking at the history of wars, that is amazing. Uh, we compare it to Vietnam. Do you guys know off the top of your head how many soldiers we lost in Vietnam? Because it was way more. 75,000, I think, somewhere yeah. around there, ballparking. And do you know how many, um, do you know how many just, Civil- no, just North Vietnamese soldiers we killed? No, a lot. It was a lot. I think it was somewhere around two million. Uh, let me look it up real quick. <laughs> quick it was I... either two hundred thousand or two million. I feel it was I, that crazy feel... number that they might have just dumped. That I know that the civilian casualties were really, really high too. But I know, like, okay, it was not two million. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I, I have numbers right here. Um. The north. Oh wait, hold on. I'm looking at the wrong size. Okay. So for North Vietnam and the Viet Cong, which if you don't know the difference, we will, we will talk about that sometime. Um, mm-hmm. But their total was around between 667,000 to 951,000 dead. Fuck. That's a lot. Um, and for the 
South Vietnamese, what do you want to call it, coalition, I guess, or whatever, with, um, you know, Australia was there, the South Korea. There, there were people there. Um, the South Vietnamese, we'll say, side lost 333 to 392,000. So still mm-hmm. less, but a lot. And there were 58,281 U.S. soldiers dead. Mm-hmm. Again, I'm not putting the people that died in Afghanistan I'm, I'm not saying their deaths are insignificant. I'm just not putting them lightly at all. Whenever a soldier dies, that is awful. You shouldn't have one casualty. That being said, I think it is astonishing that you can be at war for 20 years and have 2,500 casualties. And kind of be victorious, too. Because for a moment, we were winning. And we held control of the nation for almost 15 years. So... I don't know if this was more of a war of attrition rather than strength when you look at it. Was it we just got to hold out to the U.S. leaves or was it we the U.S. just stays here it, and we it, win by staying here? It was, a, it was definitely a war of attrition for the Taliban. They've been fighting in that part, that region of the world for centuries, if mm-hmm. not, if not um, millennia. So they know what they're doing. They've been fighting for a really long time. The only people that even got close to actually conquering, well, I guess Alexander the Great had it for like a second, but also the Romans conquered it, but they lost it really quick too because Trajan, the emperor that conquered it, got sick and died, and then Hadrian went complete isolationist defensive. So he gave back that land instead of... But it was... They are very very well trained people very well his, like historically against keeping out invaders fighting yeah. off invaders and basically just waiting out the yeah. infidels to leave and honestly respect for that like for a nation honest a nation that small not very rich in anything having that tenacity to basically tell empires to fuck off I do appreciate it, even if it's the empire I live in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. All right, well, we're going to wrap up Afghanistan there. Um, hopefully you have been educated a little more on the war of Afghanistan, why it happened, how it happened. Um, we didn't specifically get into too many battles. That's because a lot of them there were fought really. remotely. A lot of drone usage, a lot of um, anti-missile usage. No major battles like we've seen in other wars, which kind of made this war unique in its own right. Um, but, boys, scholar ballers, as we do at the end of every episode, we have a ranking. Now, I asked you guys before the show started if you remember the ranking. It's been a while. And you said no. So I'm yeah. going to give you a little refresher. We rank nations, of course, and for this weeks we're going to rank the islamic republic of afghanistan since that was the nation that kind of formed with u.s intervention and subsequently died when the u.s left um but at number eight we have the yayoi and kofun period of japan number seven we have medieval germany number six the french empire number five 19th century russia number four australia's origins number three 20th century china number two the aztec empire and then at number one, for some reason, the Akkadian, Assyria, Mesopotamia. <laughs> I love that that's number one still. Wait, where's Napoleon? That was uh, we ch- the French Empire. That's what we called it. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Well, the Aztec one was really interesting and really cool. Yeah, I like that. I don't know why that's not number one. I can't. I'd have to go back to the episode to see why we didn't vote it number one. But there was a reason we didn't. Yeah. Um, but boys, the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan. Do you think it is higher than the Yayoi and Kofun period of Japan? Uh, fuck uh, the Taliban. So uh, I would rank them to like literal negatives. The I, I, I was of... actually. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. No, yeah. this, isn't, this isn't the Taliban. It doesn't matter, Andrew. Like, okay, here. I'm, I'm, I'm kind okay. of on the same page. Wait, 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 wait. Time out. I think you guys forgot. I think you guys forgot. This is ranking not necessarily the nation. We're not saying that 20th century China is better than the French Empire. This is ranking how 
interesting we found the topic how impressive we thought it was things like that you know um i guess you could say how great the nation was as well i, I guess i did kind of just throw whatever you guys then that gives me a reason. okay listen i will i will still put it at, okay so i'll still put it at the lowest because uh being a political science major we have not stopped talking about this <laughs> you're sick of it yeah i can I, imagine I, I, man so like it's interesting. I won't lie; it is interesting, and I like to learn about it. It's just like every day. I do like, think us living through this also kind of like. I would, um, I would rank it two thousand seven hundred and eighty seventh. Did you look up every nation ever in existence? No, I looked up how many U.S. servicemen died. <laughs> so I would rank it there, okay. because it was a uh, in. All of it, it was kind of a stupid war. It was kind of a pointless war. Fought for seeing the, seeing the end result. It was kind of a pointless war. It wasn't kind of a pointless war. It was a pointless war, and I, I, I would, I'm keeping it. It's bottom. I. All right. It's interesting to talk about. I like the history of Afghanistan. I do appreciate their tenacity, but I hate it. <laughs> I personally hate it. It was, it's 2,787th for me. <laughs> All right, understood. Well, our ranking doesn't go that low, but I will put it at number nine at the bottom of our list, the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan. And that'll be it for the rankings. Now, boys, we need to talk about our next topic. Now, Afghanistan was a topic that we just kind of pulled out of our hats. We were supposed to talk about Pearl Harbor, Many moons ago. Oh shit! <laughs> but uh, save that for December. We did not. We could could be topical about it. Save for December. That being oh, yeah. said, I do have a couple things here. But is there anything that you're kind of itching at? Is there something that you want to do a little studying on, do a little research on, and then come back and talk about? Levi. Um. As of right now, not really. All right. Matthew, do you have anything that you've been that I've kind been of feeling? Feeling? Yeah. Um, no, I'll probably just make a list of ideas that we can talk about afterward because okay. I just started brainstorming right here and I came up with like three or four things that would be great for like – We could that'd do actually be, one or two parters. That would be fantastic if you guys did make – a list and then send it yeah. over to me so that I can put it in the pool. Right now, I do have three topics, which I can add to this because I also have a pool of topics that I've been rotating in. Um, so one was Pearl Harbor, but it sounds like you kind of want to save that for later, which I understand. Uh, the other three then, and one of these is going to be controversial. I don't know if you want to do it. It's a little new too. Um, but the first one is the King Tut era of Egypt. The origins of Brazil... And then the last one, I wanted to talk about Palestine and Israel. Oh, no. <laughs> Andrew. <laughs> well. So out, out of those three. Out of the frying pan. <laughs> well. So out of those three, what are you guys feeling? Um, you want to go back? You want to talk about our South American yeah, I friends? I kind of want to go back. I kind of want to go back. I kind of want to go back. I mean, well, not wait. really. I have a... Um, quick one that I could throw in there to see what the delegation would like. I was kind of thinking because I was trying to play a bit of I got one. Rome Total War Britannia today. Levi, you can go ahead and I'll say it afterwards. Okay, I was going to say, let's do ancient Celts. Now, if we are going to do ancient Celts, we're going to have to like put it into like different categories. And I want to do ancient Celts of Britannia. I could we do something along the lines of like Wessex, William the Conqueror. Can we do like a bit a brief history of Britain? I mean, yeah, but I mean, like, or would you just like to focus on the Celts? I kind of want to focus on the Celts. Can I talk about the Picts too? Yes, they're Celts. I'm down with that. (laughs) Okay, let's talk about. Okay, okay, so let's talk. Let's put it like this. Let's talk about. The Celts of ancient Britain and Ireland, and what did Roman influence do, and what happened after the Romans left? So, what was that? The Celts of ancient Britain and Ireland. Yes. Just put Celts of the British Isles. 
Celts of Britannia and Hibernia. Oh, there we go. The Celts of Britannia and Hibernia? How do you spell Hibernia. that? Hibernia. 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 H- yeah. H-I. See, with this other stuff, I at least had some idea. I, guys, you are speaking fucking French over there or something. Bro, <laughs> like it's everything Latin. Is, dude, dude, it's dude, this is actually Latin. like kind of an interesting... No, I'm, I'm I'm down for it. I love you know, I love yeah. it when you guys pull like, out topics like, like when you did Vlad the Impaler. I was like, that's okay. I've never heard of this dude. Let's do it, bro. Spooky freaking scene. um, it's interesting because like after like the Romans kind of set up Rome, Britannia, the uh, um the Gels or the Irish, ancient Celtic Irish, they were they were basically sea raiders and pirates. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, heck yeah. Okay, well we'll do that um next week. I think um. Do the Celts of Britannia and, Matthew, and if Britannia. you want to like incorporate like West like, like all that like hell yeah fuck yeah let's do that yeah I would just have to get a timeline set up and I'll probably text you guys some few a few rough things about it okay. but because I know Wessex kind of formed after the Romans left and okay. kind of the kingdoms of Britannia Saxons, as we know today the yeah, Saxons, Saxons come the Saxons. All right. Well, that sounds good. And of course, audience, make sure you subscribe and stick around so you can hear that. Now, this video will be uploaded not on early September, but this will be uploaded after the launch of our new channel, Slightly Entertained Media Productions. Slightly Entertained for short. And hopefully we'll have enough backlog then to where this does come out weekly on YouTube and of course, podcast services where you can find it now, Google, Apple, all of them really. If you like that, head over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash that one Andrew or patreon.com slash slightly entertained media because we will have both those links should go to the same place where you can support us at any tier. Three dollars is our lowest. Please leave us starving. Anyways, that'll be it for Doom to Repeat, a history podcast of the Afghanistan war. I'm Andrew, your host. Levi, thank you for joining me. Hey, man. This is, hey, man. This was an awesome 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 time yeah it's always a pleasure and then matthew thank you for joining me yeah always a pleasure and we'll see you guys in the next episode goodbye see ya bye